Hey photographer, Jessica Whitaker here. In this video, I'm going to be comparing three focal lengths for portrait photography, the 50, 85, and 135 millimeter. I teach photography from a simple and practical perspective, and that is how I do my gear videos. This video is created to help you choose what focal length would be best for you and your business and not left feeling even more confused or overwhelmed or feeling like you need to have all three because you definitely do not when you are just starting out and building out your kit. With that being said, I do shoot on a Canon and those will be the examples that I share on the screen, but I don't want you to get caught up in the actual lenses themselves. We are just going to focus on the focal length so that you can make a decision regardless of what brand you use. Thank you so much to KEH Camera for sponsoring this video. KEH is where you can buy, sell, trade in, and repair your used camera equipment, both film and digital, but I'll talk a bit more about them a little bit later on. Let's start off with the 50 millimeter. The 50 millimeter is probably the most popular choice of lenses for beginner photographers, and that is for good reason. Number one, it's a versatile lens for portrait photography. And number two, there are different price points that make this focal length extremely budget friendly. But it's a great standard portrait focal length that's gonna give you a beautiful portrait that doesn't warp the face too much. And with that, this lens is wide enough for you to be able to use in an indoor setting, whether you have a full frame or a crop sensor camera. Let's say you're doing a photo session at a coffee shop and you're limited with space. This lens is going to be the best out of all three focal lengths because you have the most room to be able to scoot back and incorporate your subject in the lens without compromising leaving too much of the background out. There are three popular 50 millimeter lenses at three different price points. And if you do opt to buy used on KEH, you're able to save hundreds of dollars simply because the lens is gently used. And this doesn't mean that the lens is damaged or in poor condition. In fact, with KEH, they rank every piece of equipment that goes through their warehouse. They thoroughly inspect it, test it, and quality rate on the website so you can see exactly what tier it falls in. So it goes from excellent plus, which is essentially like new, all the way down to bargain. And bargain will most likely have some cosmetic scratches on the outside of the lens, but it doesn't affect the actual glass or picture quality. So all that being said, when you go onto a third party auction site or a social media marketplace and you see that somebody is selling a piece of their equipment, you have no way to actually vet if what they're saying about the lens or the camera body is true because you are just blindly trusting the seller. But when you go through KEH, you can be sure that what you see is what you'll get. And if you're not happy with it, they have a generous return policy. With the three price points of the 50 millimeter, there's 1.8, which is the cheapest. It's also known as the nifty 50. And then there is the mid tier, which is 1.4. And then what I have is a 1.2. There are differences between the different f-stops but where you should begin is within your own budget. I do have a video where I compare the three different 50 millimeter lenses if you're interested. I'll have that up on the iCard as well as down in the description box below. I would suggest that if you can swing it, go for 1.4. However, if it is not within your budget or if you are just starting your photography business right now and all you have are kit lenses and you're limited on budget, go for a 1.8. You can also resell it later on KEH and then use that cash to put towards an upgrade. The next lens is the 85 millimeter, and this one is an 85 1.2, and it is my absolute favorite lens. The 85 millimeter is not a necessity, but it does do an incredible job for portrait photography because it really makes your subject pop, especially when you shoot wider open because of the depth of field and this focal length. I would recommend an 85 millimeter after you already have a lens or two, perhaps a 30 or the 50. If you're a portrait or wedding photographer, then this lens would be an investment in your business because it could improve the quality of your portraits in a way that you are looking for. Just make sure that you use wisdom making a purchase like this. And I would even recommend to go and rent one and really see if it's going to work with your photography. Now, because this lens is a lot closer up, you're a lot more limited on the space that you have to physically shoot in. To make it easy, 
see, I'm going to be sharing with you some photos that I've done on a recent video where I specifically compare the 50 and the 85 millimeter against each other. I'll have the full length video linked down below as well as on the iCard, but hopefully these images can help you see the difference even more. Now, I had some people over on my Instagram account where I've shared lens comparisons all the time say that they felt like the 85 millimeter gave it a more commercial look, and I totally agree. So it's going to come down to budget and personal preference. Hopefully that comparison can help you more. And now let's move into the 135 millimeter lens. When I think about the images that a 135 can produce, something that comes to mind are those very soft senior graduation portraits where you have a girl, she's in a field, it's golden hour, so the field is very illuminated and it's extremely soft and almost painting-like. And your eye focuses on the subject because she is so crystal clear and razor sharp and the background just plays her up rather than your eye going all around the frame at the environment. So it's really gonna depend on what kind of photography you do and what you wanna highlight. But the 135 can be a really magical option and also does great for close-up portraits. For me, this lens is not necessary for my own business. I love the 85 millimeter. And for me personally, I do not see a big enough difference when I use these two lenses in my own business to justify adding this to my kit. This could be a great option if you are a family photographer, if you do graduation photos, if you do a lot of weddings. Now, if you don't have either and you're torn between the two, something that could help you make the choice beyond renting it for yourself or watching this video is evaluating how much space do you typically have between where you are shooting? Do you do a lot of photo shoots inside? Like I'll do photo shoots inside a coffee shop, inside a hotel lobby, or a photo studio. So my space is limited, which means that I couldn't always scoot as far back as I need to, to use a 135. But if you do a lot of photos out at a park or in a big field, then this lens might be a great fit for you because you are not limited by physical space. Now I'm going to get into the example images where I went out and I shot with each focal length and I will stack up the photos side by side so you can get a visual idea of the differences. Let's tie this video all together. My personal opinion, without knowing your specific photography business, but what I do know is that you're looking for one of these three lenses, you're most likely starting out, your budget might be limited, I would say, go with the 50 millimeter first. This lens could be an essential in your kit and it's something that can grow with you. I love that it is versatile for all different types of photography and it is a lens that truly can live on your camera, especially when you're first beginning out in your business, you might be saving for a second lens, but you just need one solid prime lens. The 50 is going to be a great option. I also love that it's a lot more budget friendly for the 1.8, the 1.4, you could also go for a 1.2 but you're not limited by budget with a 50 millimeter. Check out that 1.8. Nikon makes it, Canon makes it. You can get it in whatever brand you use and you can get it very cheap 
especially when you opt to buy on something like KEH.com, which I do have a coupon code if you are interested, where you can save 5% when you shop. And I also have a selling bonus. Out of these three lenses, the 85 would be the second one that I would recommend. Now, not the second one in your kit. You might want to add something else in there, but out of these three, 85 is second. This lens for me and my photography business is solely for portrait photography. Of course, you can also get gorgeous close-up ring shots. This lens is for more than just portraits. And there's no doubt that this lens is gorgeous and creamy, but I don't think it's a necessity in your kit when you are first pursuing photography. On the priority list of these three, I would say that the 135 comes in last for the kind of photography that I do, which is a lot of branding and engagement shoots. I told you I shoot in a lot of tight spaces, hotel lobbies, studios, coffee shops. So the 135 millimeter just simply isn't practical for me. However, if you are a portrait photographer, if you do a lot of family sessions, graduations, newborns, then consider renting both of these and seeing which you personally prefer because it's going to come down to personal preference. Here's the thing. All three lenses are great. And whatever research you do, everybody's gonna have different opinions on what they think is best. And I believe that it comes down to one major thing besides the kind of photography you do. That's budget. Whether you're just starting out in your business or you're years along, we have to make smart financial decisions when it comes to purchasing gear. It's exciting to add something new to your kit, but you really have to ask yourself, can I afford this without pulling from my savings? Will it improve the quality of my work and so the client experience? And number three, how often will I actually be able to utilize this lens? And all three of those things said, we also need to ask ourselves the most important question, is this simply excitement, marketing, veneer, or is this something that is going to be a wise purchase? We have to remember that when it comes to technology, which photography falls within, we're always going to be marketed that we need this lens, this new camera, we need to go from DSLR to mirrorless and spend $8,000 on a whole new camera setup so that we can be successful. When that's simply not true, when you can get out of the belief that you are limited, your success is limited by the gear that you you have, that way of thinking of being a conscious consumer is going to enable you to purchase only tools that you need for your business. So then what you're saving can go into paying off your credit card bill, paying off your student loans, or in other areas of your business that you might need help on. There's so many other areas that money could go in your business beyond gear. And that's why I love KEH because it's good for the earth, it's good on your wallet, and you're able to still get these incredible pieces of equipment but you're able to save hundreds of dollars because you're opting to buy gently used. Photographer, I hope that this video enabled you to make a solid choice in what focal length would be best for you and for your business. Don't forget that you can check out KEH, link down in the description box below. And if you're a photographer who's looking to join a kind, encouraging, and inclusive photography community, check out my free Facebook group. It's called Build and Bloom. This is the best place to ask questions about your specific photography business. So whether you need more insight and help on what focal length would be best for you, you want to share your work as example so people can really help you make an educated choice, that's the place to share it, Build and Bloom. Build and Bloom is also great if you're having a difficult client situation and you need help drafting an email response for that situation, go to Build and Bloom. It's free to join, just search up Build and Bloom on Facebook groups. And I've also launched season two of the Build and Bloom Photography Podcast. You can listen and learn wherever you get your podcasts. I believe in you and I believe in your business. Be sure to hit subscribe so you're the first to know when new free videos for your business come out and I will see you over in the next one. Click right here to watch and to learn. I'll see you there.